I've been wanting to reupholster these chairs for so long. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. And I found these chairs about five or six years ago. They were literally $20 at the thrift store. And originally they were $199 each from Pier 1. So that was a huge deal. You can see the one on the left had been changed, but I didn't do a very good job of it. So today I think we're gonna do a better job. <laughs> so today we're gonna be using the Aero Fastener PT50. This is sponsored by them, so a big thanks for supplying that. But we're also gonna need a compressor. This is something I've used for a lot of other projects and it goes up to 120, so you can use it for a lot of home use. The fabric, washable velvet, love this color. And I'm gonna use some of this leftover Dacron. If you remember the wing back chair that I never quite finished, <laughs> this is leftover, so we're gonna use some of that. And also I did go to a professional upholster and get some buttons professionally made because I wanted this to look good. So you're also gonna need some twine and you're gonna need a big upholstery needle because we're gonna be doing some tufting today. One of the challenges that I had with this chair before was trying to get a straight row of these decorative tacks. So we're gonna use this little jig here with some cardboard and some of the decorative tacks. So you will need those as well. This chair had some pieces that would have to be sewn together to make the cover. So I needed my sewing machine, my bobbin, and some thread. You're also gonna need a tack remover, staple remover. This thing comes in handy and it's nearly impossible to remove the old fabric without using this. And even when you kind of dig in there, it can be tough and it just takes a lot of patience. But be mindful of not destroying this fabric because you're gonna use this as the pattern for your new fabric. It's also a good idea to see if there's anything that you can salvage from the old project. I thought that I'd be able to save these furniture tacks, but I couldn't. By the time I got them all off, they were bent, so I just got some new ones. It's also good to know which pieces go on first, which piece goes on second, and which piece goes on third, and so on and so forth, because this will help you determine how to put your chair back together. So take a lot of pictures and a lot of videos before you start dismantling it. You'll also need to decide if you're gonna replace the foam or the cushions in the chair. These ones were in okay condition. I didn't think I needed to replace that, so I just left it. I pulled the buttons out and then took about 10, 15 minutes to make sure that I understood completely how this was supposed to go on the chair. It's a different story when you're dealing with making a whole new pattern and now you have to fit this fabric to the chair. So don't skip this step. Just make sure that you spend some time just making sure that you know how this is supposed to fit. For the next step, I used a seam ripper to remove all the seams and all the pieces of the existing fabric. It took a long time to do because there was a lot of pieces, but I also used a marker to label the pieces because while I was working on cutting this out, I had to make sure I didn't lose sight of where things were in the pattern. So I had to make sure that I could remember how it was all fit together. And this fabric may look familiar. Do you remember a chair that I did some time ago? It was beautiful, it turned out really well. So I thought this would be a great fabric to put on the back of the chair. Well, I ended up cutting it a little bit too small, or at least I thought it was too small, and then I didn't have enough fabric to cut two more pieces. So what I would recommend is to always add a little bit of extra seam allowance onto your pattern that you're creating because you wanna give yourself a little bit of wiggle room just in case you are off just by a little bit. So more fabric is definitely better than not enough fabric. And the main fabric I'm using is called Krypton Velvet. Guys, this fabric is amazing. Yes, you saw liquids just slide off of this fabric. <laughs> we need that in households with kids. You can find the link down below and where you can get this. It's about $30 a yard. And I think if you have kids, pets, this is a great fabric to have. One thing to keep in mind is when you're cutting out pieces of fabric, you wanna take into account whether the fabric has a nap, an AP, and that's sort of the direction of the fabric, right? So if you run your hand across a velvet, one direction is gonna be very smooth and the other direction is very rough. So keep that in mind when you're cutting pieces for your chair and make sure that they all match up. Another thing too is you might have a pattern or like with the damask fabric, there was clearly a side that's up and a side that's down. So keep that in mind when you're cutting your pieces out. Also, make sure that you've got your seam allowances here. My seam allowance tends to like fold under, you see there. So I'm using a ruler trying to keep those edges nice and straight. I didn't want to cut it too small. 
Just a couple of tips for you. So because I was doing two chairs, I wanted to make sure that I did everything at the same time. There's nothing worse than doing one complete project and then you have to go back and do the same exact thing for another project. So if you're doing two chairs or more chairs, try to do the same step for each of the chairs at the same time. Now this is the old fabric that I pulled off, the nasty fabric from the old chair. I labeled those and I also labeled these pieces with the numbers and made sure I knew exactly what step I was doing and what pieces would go together. When you're pinning your fabric, try to only pin it in the seam allowance. You don't wanna get holes in your fabric. So I did a just a little run through here of the fabric, figured out that everything was good to go with sewing and then I did it piece by piece. And again, I didn't do all 14 pieces and then go back and do all 14. I did piece one and two and then did the second part for piece one and two so that I can do both chairs at the same time. And I was left with this for the first one and two pieces and then I joined piece number three. So there were 14 pieces and it started to get a little difficult because I wasn't sure if, if I was doing it properly. <laughs> I just hoped that this thing would fit. And it was a little scary when I started seeing what this was looking like. I'm like, oh my gosh, is it an elephant? Like, what is it? Um, but again, using that old pattern and looking to see how those pieces fit together helped me to stay sort of in line with where everything needed to be for matching up. So I made sure that I kept the old pieces. And as I was done with like piece number eight, I made sure that I pinned it to the old pieces. You also want to use a half inch seam allowance. I did use five eighths of an inch and I had to go back and trim all of those excess edges and it just created extra time and I wouldn't have had to do that if I'd gone with half an inch. So just make sure that you use that. Okay, so for the seat, there were three pieces that I needed for the seat and I matched all of those up sewed them together, tried to make sure that they were straight. You see here, I've got a little V cut on the bottom part and that's so that I could match up the center of the fabrics. And you can see there's not very much padding on the back. There is some foam, but I really wanted to give this more of a luxurious feel. So I thought maybe a layer of Dacron would help. And you'll notice here on the sides, I've got some relief cuts. This is so the Dacron can fit to the chair because if it's just one big square, it's not gonna fit very neatly. So whenever you're going around curves, make some relief cuts so that your fabric and your Dacron can just bend with that curve and you'll see here that the existing buttons had left an indentation and that was the perfect location to put the new buttons so using the upholstery needle it's threaded with twine the button is on the other side of the fabric and pulling that through you'll then be able to see that the button is now in place this is where it can get hard on the hands because to get that tuft you have to be able to pull tight and hold it into position and then staple it in place. And so that's what I did with the PT50. You'll wanna do maybe four staples and then turn your, your twine to the other side and give it a few more staples. This is only the second time that I've ever attempted tufting. And the first time was when I did this chair five years ago. <laughs> the scary part is when you're first putting these buttons in, you see all this extra fabric under your hand and you're worried that it's gonna look like a hot mess. And that's what my concern was, but I just kept going, working my way from one button to the next. If you are starting from scratch, make sure that your buttons are evenly spaced. Again, I had the benefit of having the indentation there, so I didn't have to guess where the buttons should be they were already there. So I didn't have to, you know, make this up, but you could also use a, a black marker and mark where your buttons have to go to make sure that they're even. Make sure that your buttons have even tension on them. You don't want one of the buttons to pop off after you've completed the chair and then you have to tear everything out in order to do it over again. So make sure you've got it evenly tensioned. And once all the buttons are in place, then you can start fitting all the other fabric around the chair. So you see that I'm tucking in the part closer to the bottom. Now this is where I wish I would have had a little bit more fabric on the bottom so that I could have pulled it because that's how you get rid of all the wrinkles. And I also did a little bit of stuffing here with the coconut fiber to try to fill in some of these places where I thought, you know, there's just a little bit too much wrinkles here and I can't seem to pull the fabric tight enough in order to get rid of those. So I did do a little bit of stuffing 
filling in and then pulling as tight as I can to get rid of those. And you just wanna make sure that it's not too lumpy. So try to break up some of that stuffing, some of the coconut fiber, and then pull it tight. When I did an upholstery class a couple years ago, one of the things that I learned from him is to always pull your fabric tight and to secure it in the middle. So like here, if I'm securing this fabric in the middle, then I can start to pull the excess fabric to the corners where it can then be secured. And that's what I did. So I worked my way up from the bottom and then secured the middle and then just tried to pull as tight as I could. And you know, the next day my fingers were actually hurting and they were starting to change colors because of the dye in the fabric because I was pulling so hard. So this is not an easy task when you're trying to get out tufting wrinkles, <laughs> especially when you're sort of a newbie at this. And yes, those are my Christmas PJs. Typically I don't work on projects at night, but this one was really, really fun. And so after the kids were in bed, it was time to come down in my pajamas and finish up whatever the task was for the day. So the corners I just did sort of just a little fold over trying to keep it attractive and neat. And then it was time to move on to the seat. You'll see here that I've got a little bit of scrap fabric that I sewed onto the back. Now you could make your fabric a little longer. The only thing is, is that you're using more of your good fabric. You don't wanna do that. So just sew on a piece of scrap fabric and this gives you something to pull when you're trying to get a nice tight fit underneath the chair. To get around the legs, I added one staple to the center and then pulled tight with my left hand, then used the scissors and created just a little snip and secured it with one staple. So I'll do that on the other side as well, and then that fabric that's around the leg will be tucked up underneath. But in the meantime, I'll keep pulling, making sure that everything is snug and adding staples as I go. You want that fabric around the legs to be nice and snug, no wrinkles, so pull it tight and then staple. Now when I had cut out the other pieces of the other fabric for the back, it didn't seem like it was big enough. So this one I decided to make a little large. I can trim away anything that I don't need. And then once I cut it out, it was time to apply it to the back. Now I put one single staple in the middle and then pulled tight on both ends and secured it. Then I flipped the chair upside down and pulled it down as tight as I could and put a single staple right there in the middle. And I think that's one of the most important tips that I learned in the upholstery class that I took a couple of years ago is that if you secure it in the middle and then pull towards the sides, you tend to get a better outcome. You're going to have less wrinkles. It's going to be smooth. And again, I needed to do this to work this fabric around those legs. So by pulling smooth and snipping, I was able to secure it with one staple and then do the same for the other side. Again, just making a little snip there. And once I had that tail, then I could flip that underneath and then staple it into place. So this is kind of new to me. I've not really done that many upholstery projects. So this was fun to experiment. And I think it's, it's why it took me so long is because I was trying out all of these techniques that I remembered from upholstery class. Just really wanted this to turn out great. And I think it looked pretty good actually. Once the bottom was secure and was looking good, I pulled the sides as tight as I could and applied staples right along the edge of that fabric, hopefully in locations where the furniture tacks could disguise the staples. I put some relief cuts here along the edge or along the curve so that I could curve that fabric without any wrinkles. And then it was time for the furniture tacks. I used cardboard and I thought I'd put them all in at one time like this. That didn't work very well but the cardboard was helpful because I was able to put them half an inch apart and one quarter of an inch up from the bottom. So there's a link to a video that I will link down below to so that you can see how this was done. It was helpful for me in order to get these on properly. If you have any mistakes, just remove them, reapply it. You can also use a furniture tack strip. Some people swear by them. Okay, so the next part after getting the furniture tacks in was to figure out, am I gonna refinish the legs or am I going to just use a repair marker? I decided to use a repair marker because I've used these before. They do a pretty good job, not perfect, but pretty good job of disguising any worn parts of the chair. And I added a little bit of furniture polish. So this was a good solution for me. I didn't wanna to have to you know, refinish those as well. So this is what it looked like before guys, beautiful chairs, but horrible fabric and falling apart. And now these things are so gorgeous. I thought that I would use them 
as dining room chairs. I put them in my dining room. When my mom saw it, she said, why are you putting these in the dining room? You know the kids are going to destroy them. <laughs> well, she doesn't know that I have Krypton fabric, but I think she's right. I think these have to be more of a centerpiece, so I'm going to use them probably in my family room. But again, off limits to kids. They cannot use these at all. These are for me and hubby, not for children. And I told them no picking at the furniture tax either. You cannot remove those. But these chairs turned out great, considering that this is only really the first true time that I've done tufting. I like how they turned out. There's some wrinkles, but I think that's normal if you're using velvet. And, you know, I think the more projects you do, the more you, you improve. So don't be afraid to give a project like this a chance. Make some mistakes, learn all you can, and just keep going. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's for your house. So if you enjoyed this project, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to come back and see another project that I'm going to do with fabric and wood and power tools. And be sure to like this video, leave a comment and come back again and subscribe. Big thanks to Arrow Fastener, which is sponsoring this video. And I will see you next project.